are going to be doing these cute little bunny rabbit egg gourd decorations or Easter decorations and we're going to start by using an actual egg gourd and we're going to be putting all of his little body parts and everything on with quick wood and the first thing we do when we work with quick wood is we remove all of our jewelry because quick wood dries rock hard in an hour and that includes in your jewelry so be careful with that and don't forget your bracelets and everything as well so now that we've got that off, we're going to start by putting a little bit on our hands of vegetable spray and also a little bit on our wax paper so that our little bunny doesn't stick to him once we get going here. We're going to take our quick wood, which is epoxy two part, and there's your two parts, and we're going to cut a hunk off put back on the rest of it so we can use that in a moment and one of the most important things about quick wood is you have to remove the plastic wrapper and you don't want to do that till you're starting to use it but a lot of people forget to use remove that and they call me up or in class they'll be sitting there and they'll ask me what's wrong and I'll pull the wrapper out of their quick wood so it's real important to, to do that we're going to knead it together and by kneading it, it activates it and when it's all one color and it starts to get a little bit warm to the touch is when it is ready. If you don't knead it really well, it is not going to harden up. So people that wondered why their quick wood didn't harden up. They didn't need it all the way. And we have 20 minutes workable time with our quick wood today. And what we're going to do is we're going to make some little feet for our little rabbit guy here. And I'm going to roll a ball. And I'm going to roll another ball. So I kind of have the idea how these are in size to each other. And I have enough for three here, not four. So we're going to do two of them and then we'll do a new thing a quick wood so I'm going to take my ball and then I'm going to start pushing it down and I'm going to pull it in the back and make it kind of like a um, teardrop I guess is a word I'm looking for and actually pulled some of that out because I was a little bit bigger than I wanted so we may get four feet out of this yet. It's easier to kind of compare it when you're making balls and later on when you're trying to figure out is that about the same amount or not. And I always take my part that I'm not using and stick it in the corner, keep the air out of it. That helps it from drying quite as fast. So let's go back again, have our little ball. We're gonna push it down and we're gonna pull to the back to make a little teardrop. So we're going to lay that little guy down right there. And I'm going to measure this off to the next one. And so we've got those the same size. We're going to do it again. I'm going to lay it down, make a little teardrop. It's a little bit bigger than the other one. Pull it off from the back. Set that guy right there. And that's his front feet. And we're going to do his back feet. So we're, we've got him going in this direction and that direction. So we're going to do the same thing again. And one of the things that I always tell people, don't try to overdo it. I keep my stuff simple. Don't try to be so perfect. And I want you to have fun with it. It's more fun when you're just kind of doing it than worrying about it being perfect and everything. So, kind of lining it up with my um, A gourd a little bit, seeing where I want the feet. And then we'll finish up this little last one. So we did end up getting four out of his feet. Quick 
liquid works better and sticks better when it is wetter and fresher. So the longer you work with it, the more it's going to dry out and not stick as well. So if you ever have some and you can't figure out why it didn't stick real well, that's the reason why. Also keep your oil off it as much as possible, especially on the part that you're sticking to. I sometimes wipe the oil off and then put it on. You also can put a little bit of E6000 on it too if you need to. Okay, I'm going to kind of look at that. That looks pretty good. So I'm going to put his little paws in. And I'm using my little um, set of carving tools, not carving tools, but clay tools. And all I'm doing is putting two little things so it gives him three little toes. So we're doing one, two, one, two. So we're just kind of giving him an ex some toes there. So now we're going to take him and we're just going to set his body down. If you have a part of the egg that you want that looks better than the other. And we're going to push it into that so that he is stuck to that. You don't have to glue it or anything into those little feet. So we've got his little feet on. So now let's do his ears. Now remember it takes about 20 minutes for those to be kind of hard. And remember to remove your plastic. And we're going to need need see how that's real marbleized you can see that it needs to be blended a lot more so it needs to be one solid color so we're going to make sure that we get that color and if you need it any time to let whatever you're working on dry first it doesn't take that long walk away go do something else and come back by that time it'll be dry it's not a not a big deal at all we're going to work on his ears, but we want to make sure that we leave enough room for his face. So I don't want to put it past probably about a third of the front of that um, egg. So we're going to leave that part done. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to break this into two equal parts again. And we're going to roll these a little bit long this time. And going to kind of bring the tips to a point and I'm going to kind of put my finger down in it and pull it and I'm going to push this on. You also can use your um, wax design tool as well and I want these flatter on my first ones I didn't do get these as flat right as well right there and we'll talk about his ears standing up or his ears laying down in just a minute so again we're gonna kind of make that to a point I'm gonna stick my little finger in there kind of get the shape of that ear if you want to make it leave them more narrow and flat, you can use the tool, the number two tool there. And I'm going to turn him around so I can see him a little bit here. And I'm just going to work this out a little bit. I'll show you, turn it around again in here and show you what I did. It's kind of hard to see and work backwards and talk at the same time. So what I'm doing is I'm just smoothing this little part out down on his ears. And you also can smooth it out with your finger a little bit with a vegetable spray. Make sure you keep the shape. Now, if you want to have his ear standing up, you want to put something behind him that's bigger that won't move as much and can kind of stay there. Now 
those are not doing too bad there. On the other one, I used my wood dowel. We'll see if I can find something. And if you don't want them to stand up, then just leave them flat along the way. I have them done in both both ways. We're going to set that guy, and actually what you need to do is even out the wood dowel. If you've got it one side heavier than the other, it is going to try to slant one side more than the other. And I'm going to see if I could split these ears just a little bit more here and separate them so they're not quite touching all the way. They're a little bit apart. And the drier it gets, the harder it gets. So that's really kind of nice too. Now I do want to come in here and just smooth. And then what I'm just going to do is blend this out so once we paint it, you can't see where it's added on at all. And I bumped my ears. What I'm going to do is I'm going to let it dry at this time. We're going to give it some time to dry. And we're going to come back and we're going to start his little facial features. Because I don't want to get into those. And it also gives some time for the feet to dry as well. So we'll be back in a minute and we'll start on his face. Alright, now that we've let his ears dry, I want to talk to you a couple things about the ears. The more you want them to stand up, the more you walk and roll the... Um, dowel up but you don't want to move it off of this area because that's the area that sticks if it does happen which I did E6000 it back on and it will stay it's not a big deal it's just going to take a little bit longer than what we wanted so now that we've got that on let's get our next piece here and let's do his tail first and then we'll start on his face plastic off. In class I make them repeat it after me. It seems like when we do that we don't have that happen as often as we used to need it. And I've had that happen too where a piece hasn't hearted up on somebody and they forgot to need it. Need it to activate it. I think this is a bigger piece and we'll probably want for his tail. Might be enough even for his face. We'll see here. I took my carrot when I was all done, and that was my leftovers, and I found this little leaf bead on, and I stuck that in it. You also have dried flower stuff and things like that you can do to make your own little carrot. So, okay, so remember I talked about putting that in the corner and kind of keeping it nice and moist. So we're going to put our little tail on. And I rub him, roll him into a round ball, and then I do which tool I want here. We've got to stick it on. We can't just stick it on all the way. So a lot of times I even use just my X-Acto or my hobby knife. And what I'm doing is I'm grabbing a small piece of that clay and pushing it in and onto the bunny itself. So we're trying to keep that circle shape, but we're giving it a little bit something to hold on to. And then you want to smooth that part that you left there on the bunny out as much as possible. And then we're going to want to make him kind of fluffy. No, nope, there he goes. He's wiggling away from me. Let's try. Okay, so we brought more about this time. And then we're going to try to blend that off. If you can get your finger in there, do your finger. I don't think I can get my finger in there. You don't want to take it away. You want to leave it because you 
needs to have a base to stick to. So I'm going to leave that. I'm not going to mess with that much more. But what we're going to do is to kind of make his tail look furry. We're going to put some holes in his tail. And just trying to remember which little tool I used here. I'll try with a knife first. want to flatten him out too much. We want a round shape. But we want it to kind of look airy and fluffy is what we're trying to do. If you have a sharp tool, toothpick, anything like that, you can put on that little tail. Okay. So we've done his tail. You could have even made his tail a little bit smaller. If you had needed more, you could take this piece and work it into your new quick wood piece, and that would um, last a little bit longer, not dry out as fast on you. But we don't need the that much more. But what we're going to do is we're going to roll two round balls. These are his little cheeks. And we're going to put them on, and we want to put them on and push them forward so that they're kind of meeting right there at that little nose area. So put the ball on, and then push, but you want the fat part to come out the front and the part to blend in in the back so that you're getting this little nose part. So let's do that again. You have the ball and you're going to push at the back of that ball or about halfway through that ball and you end up bringing all of this blend it into your gourd as much as possible so that you don't see that line so that we create that little nose so I'm going to blend this in a little bit more so when we paint it hopefully that won't show and leave that little part down there that that's his mouth that's fine Go ahead and leave that. Now we're going to make his little nose. And his nose is a triangle. So we're going to make it into three sides. You can see my three sides. We're just going to kind of squish it and then put it on the three sides. And then we're going to set that little nose piece right in the middle. of his little cheeks so that he's got a little nose. Now this doesn't have to blend in because it's a definite nose. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take our whatever you're going to use for your whiskers and I found this on my bead string. It was this black string or it's not wire it's plastic and you also could use like your fishing line or whatever if you find something that's black coated that's great if you don't don't worry about it you can paint it later black but what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and make the entries for where these would stick and make sure they can they're deep enough that you, you can kind of stick that whisker into them but you don't want to let it dry in there because when you're painting it, it's going to get covered up. So we want three little holes on each side. So we put three little holes on each side. And when you're doing all this, make sure you still have enough a little room right there for the eyes. And that is all the clay we have on him. So with my little extra part, I'm going to make me another little carrot. So I'm going to roll him out just like that little bit not too sharp of a point and then when he starts trying a little bit more I'm gonna take my knife and I'm gonna cut little or push little creases in to give him more of a carrot look and orange is a hard color to base coat so you could start with a lighter color even of a like even like a straw yellow is a good base color and then put the orange over the top of it or a red that's not um, a red red 
that has more orange in it that's not that base coats very well is what I'm trying to say so we're going to leave him like that we're going ahead and let our rabbit dry and then when we come back we're going to paint him all with a a tan colored brown on this one I'm going to use um, Bambi brown tan brown anything like that this is from Delta so when I come back I'm going to just completely have painted all of him brown with this color and then we'll take it from there okay I painted my entire bunny with the tan color and I came back and gave him a base coat of white for his eyes and then coral or rouge on his nose. You don't want a pinky pinky. You want more of an orangish pink color. So we've done that and by painting them all tan first, it helps these other colors base coat well. We're now we're going to come back in and we're going to put some white on his, and I'm going to use ivory, I'm not going to use white. I'm using like an old school brush, a scruffy brush, and I'm kind of pouncing my color out. And we're going to put it on, and I still have a little bit too much more in there that I'd like less. We're going to put it on his feet to kind of highlight his feet. And then we're going to come in and we're going to put some around his little mouth area. And it kind of highlights that a little bit. So we've done him and we're also going to do his tail. And his tail is going to be more. It's not going to be less. It's going to be more. So his tail is kind of white. And also kind of around the outside of his ears and there goes my glue again I'm trying to rush it shame on me and if you notice that's the one thing because I did glue it on this has wiggled and I don't have a clean line and you always want that so it doesn't look like it is part of a piece it looks like it's all blended together so we're just going to go ahead and finish this I'm not going to worry about that if it comes off doing this it comes off we'll glue it back on later just time limitations we're not able to do it the way I'd like to do it now I did come back in and put some little uh, dark brown in his tail to even make it a little bit more dimensional like it's deeper so we're kind of putting those in just kind of here and there and those holes that we fill just to make it look fluffier and then we're also going to do that with his little feet we're just going to come in and with our liner kind of line and I'm using a dark brown just line in these little guys right here just to show those off really well so those show up all right now we're gonna go and we're gonna fluff and we're gonna add fur to him and I'm gonna use my same brush that I was using for the white and I'm gonna go to my medium brown this is named nut and egg brown so we need that's a medium brown and again I'm using that kind of kids brush or a stipple brush anything where we can kind of make fur and we're just going to come in here and we're going to go all over the brown area and we're just going to give him fur and you really want it everywhere everywhere you can all right now we're going to do the same thing <laughs> E6000 takes 24 hours to set all the way up, folks. We're going to do the same thing with the little ears. We're going to come in here. We're going to do the reddish orange color. And my other one, I did coral, and I do like the coral better than the rouge. I thought that's what I had picked out, but obviously it wasn't. So we're going to do the inside of our little ears and then we're going to also come back in here and we're going to do his little cheeks and I'm going to finish up on the other little rabbit and kind of walk you through it 
So his cheeks, I like to use a little fabric brush. And we do the same thing. We pounce that color out. And then we're just going to pounce it there. And then in his little whisker area there. I did come back and put a little bit of white over the top of the pink. I did a little white stroke right on his nose. His eyes, I made sure they were like a teardrop and they were base coated all the way in in white first. And then I took my bottom of my brush and went into my blue and I dropped it just like that to make that circle, the bigger circle. And test the bottom of your brush to see if it's big enough. You might want one that's bigger than the other one. Now see, that's a bigger one than this one. So I did the black fur, or excuse me, the blue first, and then I came back in with little black dots and put them in his eyes just like that. Um, then I outlined them, and when you outline them on like this, you want to use your liner that's very long and thin. Usually I use a 10 aught brush and it has just those little wispies and you take your black and you water it down to eat consistency and you just go around the outside. Then I pulled in some little whiskers just like that. And I did a little couple more whiskers there as well. When I finished completing all of his details, I varnished him and then I glued in those little whiskers that we were talking about with E6000. I cut them into little pieces and glued that in with the 6000. And that is our little Easter Bunny. I hope you enjoyed him. He was a lot of fun. Sometimes our artwork can be a little bit frustrating too, but don't let it get to you. And like on the E6000, take time to let things dry in between. Don't rush it. Then you'll just get discouraged and don't want to do it. So allow time in between. If you have any questions about it, please email me at art at miriamjoy.com. For any of the quick wood that we used for the rabbit today, you can visit my website at miriamjoy.com for any of those products there. Thank you for joining me today. God bless.